In this video, we are going to start using the Flutter block package. The Flutter block package has actually simplified a series of tasks for us. We still need to create our events and states, but this package has simplified the work with block. We don't need to write string controllers from scratch or listen to events. This package does all these things for us. Let me give you some great news. You can join our Flutter community on Telegram. Simply join this group to stay in contact with other Flutter developers to learn from each other and to become a better Flutter developer. So don't forget and join now. First, I want to start by introducing the important block widgets. The first widget is block provider. In my opinion, this widget is one of the most important widgets in this package. What this widget does for us is that it provides an instance of our block class for the widgets that are located under the block provider in the widget tree. And those classes can access that block. This is also called dependency injection. Now imagine the counter block class. Suppose that I have different widgets on a page and I created class for each widget separately. And I want to access that counter block instance in all these classes. Instead of passing the instance of counter block class to all other classes, I use block provider and make that instance of counter block class fully available on that page for all classes. Let's assume that the green point is our block provider widget, which is providing us a block. Now in this picture, the two lower widget whose block provider is their parent have access to the block provided by the block provider, but other widgets don't have this possibility. But how do they have access? This is doing using context. Every widget has a context that represents the location of that widget in the widget tree. Suppose I have a block named test block and I want to provide it to its children using block provider. Now the green widget is our block provider and the widgets below it are its children. To access the test block, we can use the context of the children of the block provider like this. These two lines do exactly one thing, and that is to find the test block for us and return to us. Another advantage is that block provider automatically dispose that block class for us, and we don't need to worry about manually disposing that block. But there are some very important situations. Suppose you want to use a block globally, so that all pages have access to that block. In this case, we should place the block provider at the highest point of the widget tree, so that everyone can access it. If we put the block provider on top of the material app, we actually create this global state and everyone can access that block provider. In this code, I have a block provider that is providing test block. Actually, the create field in block provider is for this reason that we have to write a method that takes a context and must return the block class in the body of that method. Now here, I am creating the test block so that the widgets under this block provider have access to the test block. Now, if you put the block provider in this way, you have access to it globally. Because if I want to say the widget tree of this code, it will be like this. If you pay attention, block provider comes after my app, which is located in the root, and this means that all pages with context have access to it. Suppose we are going to provide some block classes for the sum widgets. For this, we can use multi-block provider. Only the advantage is that you can provide several blocks. In the providers field, we can give it our block provider list like this. Well, that's enough for the block provider, but we will come back later. In the next video, I want to explain block builder, so stay with me.